We'll let some people get in here. <clears throat> Waiting on Nick and uh, a few other people. What's up, Jessica? Waiting for some people to get in here. I didn't even know if I was live or not. I'm glad I saw you pop up because I didn't even know if I was live. I can't see anybody else right now. Oh. <laughs> Andy, what's up, Andy? I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Waiting for Nick. Young Ant, what's up, young Ant? <clears throat> I know this is off the, the subject, but these right here, these aminos, you need to get on those. I'm addicted. This is my drug right here. <laughs> I don't know where Nick's at. I, I sent him an invite. Well, here, let me, let me add you and we'll up to you until Nick. What's up? Hey. <laughs> I don't know where Nick's at. I don't know. They were messaging me not too long ago. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. So. Well, she knows because she's what yeah she's the one that told me about the live at seven and then i reached out to you i was hoping you were the, still the one doing it so yeah he hit me up I, I tried to bring him on last night but i wanted you to tell your story so yeah <clears throat> yep there's this they exact it's pretty much the exact same thing they're dealing with the exact same thing that's what he was telling me yeah they're refusing yeah. to let his kid get on the bus yeah. there he is what's <laughs> up nick hey send me uh let me see if i can send you an invite hold on a second here, I'll jump off here so they can have their, they can do All right. their live. Yeah, I was just trying to talk to you until he came yeah, in here. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. <clears throat> it should be bringing you on right now. Hold on one second. Matt Miller, Tiny, what's up, man? Trying to get him on here. Hold on one second. Yeah, I saw all that, man. Dude, I said months ago, I said they were going to start trying to take him out, and nobody believed me. Everybody laughed at me when I said that. I said, you're going to see some Epstein stuff go on. They're going to find this man dead. Everybody laughed at me. Now he's, they've tried to kill him twice. I'm telling you, man. I'm trying to bring you on. 
Oh, Nick, hold on a second. Yeah, they thought I was crazy, man. I'm in tune to the world, though, man. I see this thing, these things coming from a mile away. I always have so much trouble like getting people on here. We finally make it work though. <laughs> Bring them on camera. Add. It says this person was unable to join because of technical issues. Something's going on with uh with him where it won't let him come on for some reason. Nico, what's up? Leonard, what's up? Joe, what's up? I'm getting tired of these schools, man. Hold on. Yeah, I know I am. I might have to go up top for a minute. It may be my signal down here. Hold on a second. I had to do this yesterday. Shit is lagging. Oh. Sorry. Here we go. Except I had to come up here yesterday to add her, and then when I came up here, yeah, see, as soon as I come up top, I get signal. Yep. I had to come up here yesterday to add her, and then when I come up. Here, oh crap! Hold on. Uh, it finally <clears throat> came on the computer, so we don't have to hold the phone. But if we have to hold the phone, that's fine. Let's see if it'll do it again. Yeah, now I'm okay, it seems. For some yeah. reason, Let's when I'm, I, I'm down in the basement, so sometimes my signal down here gets a little crazy. So, how, how are you guys doing? You're uh, huh? You're froze. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. So, so they're, they're not allowing your kid to get on the bus now? Well, we have two children. Both are autistic, and Grace Moore seems to tag team the kids. We have received at least one phone call from the school every day since school has started. Um, I do, and they know this. I've told them, so I'll tell publicly. Um, I will not divulge anything that the school does not know. I have been instructed certain things I can talk about, certain things I can't. Right. Um, so I have some bullet points, which doesn't even touch the surface of everything, um, but it is three pages long. Wow. So, yeah, we've been, uh, we have a fifth grader and we have a third grader. And since my son's first day of pre preschool, we have been fighting the district for multiple issues. So um, we have tried changing districts. Um, and I believe Jessica touched on that. Uh, they will deny it because they don't want you to go from one district to the other because then you pull their funding. But they're more okay with district to district if you go school to school. As long as you stay in the district, that's okay. You want to go outside yeah. the district? Uh-uh. Nope. Mm -mm. Not going to happen. They shouldn't have any say in that at all. You should be able to put your child wherever you want to. Should. Exactly. Should. So they're really they're really stopping you from putting your child in the school of your choice. See, here's here's a white piece of paper. Here's a black line. On this side it's gray. On this side it's gray, and the two gray sides is where Grace Moore stays. Right. So you might say this, but I can take it, spin it, and flip it, and it might kind of mean this. So I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. So there's a lot of egos. Um, she knows who I'm talking about. Um, a lot of egos, personal opinions, and, uh, I mean, certain 
certain people are just victimized by right. this rule. And basically, if you have a disability and you don't come to school, sit down, shut up, and your parent just leaves you and doesn't have any involvement at all, then you will have to fight to get your child anything. If your child has an IEP or any kind of assistance or need or anything uh -huh. that you're a nuisance and a strain to their system and their resources, you are the problem. Yeah, that's what I was saying last night. Because they're different, they just, oh, you're different, you don't belong here. And they're just trying to get rid of them. Yeah. yeah. But aren't yeah. These, these people supposed to be specialized in taking care of these kids? Like, do, are they even certified? Oh. Have they even worked with autistic kids? Like, are they substitute I mean, teachers trying to fill in? Well, one of my one of my points <laughs> here is actually in my son's IEP. Uh, actually, both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, North Kansas City. I actually went back on my papers. I have I have two file totes full of documents, and I have more that won't fit in the two totes. So wow. I have a, a couple things. Um. When I seen Jessica's thing, I got sent I got sent Jessica's information by a friend. She said, I think you should be her friend. And I read it and I was like, Lady, we need to chat. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as soon as she started putting it out there. But see, we've been told that our son is the only one that's ever liked this. They've never had this kind of a problem at Grace Moore before. They have never had to have a student like this. He is just bad. But they have a whole bunch of autistic, like they have their own, like section of the school for autistic children, uh, right? She, Harris actually quoted this. North Kansas City is, uh, hold on. <laughs> North Kansas City is very fortunate. We have the resources and we have multiple special needs certified educators in our district. One of whom is designated for Grace Moore. So therefore, both kids are supposed to be getting specialized services by this specific specialized whoever. Right. This, this was implied three years ago in his IEP. He has not received one minute of service from this specialized person. And wow. any time, uh, so all my calls, I make them leave me a voicemail or I contact through Dojo. So I scan the phone call to make sure my kids aren't in an emergency. And usually it's not, usually it's Gabriel stepped out of his tile square in the lunch line today. He was a distraction. He's supposed to be a role model for the entire school. So therefore he was uh, not a good role model and it interrupted the whole school because he got out of a 12 by 12 square tile in the lunch line. That, that is deemed for a parental phone call. I think you got people that just don't know how to deal with these children you know, that don't know nothing about autism or, or anything about the spectrum. And they're, you know, they, they're just getting frustrated because they don't know how to deal with them. And Gabriel and, was suspended today. This video and all this came out yesterday. Yeah. As Jessica stated last night, Wyatt and her and her family had his, I forget what they call it. What's a fancy term? I don't know. I called it happy a friendship meeting. meeting. Yeah, I called it a happy meeting today with her. The re-entry um, meeting she yes, was talking about? Yes. yes, thank you. They had the re-entry meeting today, blah, blah, blah. So Harris and the entire school know <laughs> about the video last night. They seen my name pop up on comments, so on, so on, so on. I have been told by many, many other sources, do <laughs> not rattle the cage until you are full or you are ready for the full on wrath and right. we looked at each other last night we said you know what she's doing it let's bring it bring it i've been Roll. fighting this i've been trying to get a hold of fox Four problem solvers for two years nobody will take it on it's a school it's a safe place why wouldn't your kids be school safe at school that's what i was going to ask think... like have you tried to contact like other outlets and nobody yeah oh those Poor kids, the only time that they get love and affection and food and resources is at school, right? No, my kids are scared when they get on that bus and scared when they get home. I have to check them. I have to ask them. I have to get the document, the, the notebook out and say, baby, how was your day? Well, so-and-so said this. So-and-so did this. So-and-so hit me, and I told the teacher. She said, quit tattling. Our son, oh, <laughs> funny story for you. She just sent me a dojo message. Hi. 
<laughs> so, yeah, it's our school school messaging oh. system. Since oh. <laughs> we've been live, since we've been live, she's she's now communicating with me through the school school messenger. Yeah, so it's funny like, when you force the hand. Now all of a sudden they want to they want to work this out because we don't need this publicity. We don't need. I know. Keep just shut your mouth and we'll try to work it out with you. Honey, no. that was three years ago. We when shut I our mouth. That. We've been trying to work it out. I know. Oh, now you want to listen. Yes. Last year, we had to take Gabriel to the urgent Children's Mercy Urgent Care. Uh -huh. um, he was suspended. He was not taken to the nurse's office. He was taken to the office. We were called in for a physical altercation. So we show up, and Gabriel's face is just red. And I said, what's wrong, baby? And he was holding his side. He said, Mom, it hurts to breathe. My son has quite a few medical issues as well. And I said, why is it hard to breathe? And he said, where I got kicked. And I said, what? <laughs> where you got what? And he said, where I got kicked. And Harris tried talking over. No, 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 no. He didn't get kicked. He pushed a kid, and then we have a no-touch policy, so he's suspended. And I said, okay, why did he get kicked? And he pulled up his shirt. I'll be damned. It was starting to turn purple. I said, then why is he bruised? Well, I don't know. I said, well, really, where's the video? We can't release any video footage, and we haven't reviewed it yet. But multiple students said that Gabriel pushed a kid, and so he's suspended because we have a strict no-touch policy in our school. But so, he's got a bruise on his ribs, and that kid's not going to get punished? Like, currently changing, yes. She yep. cannot, due to privacy, she can't tell us what happened to the other kids. But, you know, we know other kids in the school. The kids were at school the next day. The truth be told, three kids had Gabriel pinned down in the lunchroom, kicking him, hitting him, and one was setting on him while they were doing it. Yeah, Gabriel that's what I'm worried about. Pushed, Gabriel pushed one. So therefore, Gabriel pushed. So therefore, he got suspended because he touched him. We took him to urgent care. He had a bruised kidney urinating blood. Wow. Amongst other bruises consistent with that. So then we took him to the Kansas City Police Department because that's the jurisdiction the school's in. Right. We filed a police report. Okay, fine. Next day, I called the state on the school. And they said, well, we'll do an investigation, but since the schools are mandated reporters, usually they're safe at school. And I said, well, this is an unusual case. Nobody will show me the video footage, but all I know is I have son with reported bruises, urinating blood. <laughs> what are we going to do here? So it came back, the state wouldn't do anything. Harris called me and told me, I have it recorded, if you call the state on me again, I will just tell them that we don't have enough resources and the next time he should stay there until the staff can get there to assist him. Wow. wow. And the Kansas City Police Department also said that they can't prosecute the school because they are deemed a safe place. So Harry. every time you talk to her, you should start, re are you recording those conversations? You should start doing that. Um, because for her to say, oh, well, next time we'll just say this. Like, you know, if you can get a recording of that, you know what I mean? Here's Grace Moore's policy on recording. It has just become an issue as of like February of this year. Yeah. Um, apparently it's been an issue for years and it's been a policy or procedure or whatever, but it was made to our attention when we wanted to record an IEP meeting. And we had to sign a disclosure by the school district saying that if we recorded any kind of meeting or interaction at the school, then we had to submit all surveillance footage to the school so therefore they could use it if they deem necessary. I said, so what happens when we go to a school choir performance? I said, have those other parents signed to record my kid? That's different. So... <laughs> No, that's your that's your right. It, the freedom of the press and speech. You can say whatever the hell you want, record whatever the hell you want. Exactly. But like, who who again, do these people think they are? That's the district's policy. District's and if you policy. don't abide by it, this meeting will conclude now. That's what we're told. Wow. Yep. This uh, this Miss Harris sounds like a. <laughs> A uh, real uh, stand-up person. You know, you know the sad thing about history? Yeah. Is certain countries 
tend to forget what happened in other countries that may have caused a world war under certain dictatorships. I feel like my children are in that kind of era and realm when they go to school every day. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I wanted to homeschool my son, but it was just impossible just trying to work and then have the money and the resources to do it. Right. I put him in public school. I just enrolled him. He hasn't started going yet, but I'm scared to death because I'm like hearing all this. I'm, and I, Man. I have, I have messaged you a few things, and as well as we've been told that, you know, as a parent, you know, you're welcome to drop by the school anytime. You can go have lunch with your children at any time. Right. So on and so on and do the check-in process. Yeah, it's all sunshine and rainbows till it happens. I show up for my kids' lunch and no, you you didn't ask for permission. You can't have lunch with them today. We need 48 hours notice for you to have lunch with them. We didn't make enough food. I'm like, what are they in prison? Food. Do you got to get on the visitors list? Like that, that's Maybe what this is sounding you like. Maybe you can't come you visit your own child. Yep. What the hell is that? Yep. That is ridiculous. I've been told because they don't make that enough food. I said, it's okay. I don't have to eat. I'm a big girl. <laughs> I just want to go see my son. Like I knew this stuff went on, but I didn't know it was such a widespread problem until last night after me and Jessica went live. Like I started getting messages after messages of people you saying, know. Oh, I've been through that too with my kid's school and my son's autistic. And he's got, he went through this. And now I'm realizing that there's a, a whole bunch of parents that are dealing with this. You want to tell you know? me what we requested today? Oh, requested that he be moved rooms because we have received, like Jenna had said, um, a call every day since school has started. Obviously, our son isn't getting along with the teacher that he is with, so we have requested for him to move rooms. Right. A different teacher, different class, and his really good friend, they keep them separated. They both calm each other down. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, as well as the rest of us, autistic kids cling to certain people. They have and their familiars. If a yeah. certain person helps calm them down. Oh, right. and this student will put him in his place. They will oh, tell yeah. him, Gabriel, you're not being nice right now. I'm not going to be your friend. And he is crushed. The whole world just yeah. shakes. And he's like, that's his reality check like right. this student and him just have a way of like this student will put him in his place and it's a reality check for him and he's like okay and they the other parent has said that gabriel has the same type of effect with this other student and that they kind of yin and yang together and everything else but yeah. harris will will keep them apart and fight to the death to make sure that they stay apart so we had requested for them to move Gabriel classrooms. And she says, that's not going to happen. Nope. Yeah. Wow. I that said, is so ridiculous. I said his homeroom teacher has called me every day. He dropped his pencil and got up whenever it was quiet time. Really? What? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to transfer really? your kid to another class that you should be able to do that like i don't understand them telling you no you you can't move your own child anything we have requested we've been told no we've requested an iep meeting um on back to school night and we were told yeah we'll get together and i said listen i said this next iep since it's a habitual thing with this school and with this staff not being accountable and things coming into his iep that were never discussed and things being taken out of his IEP, like the doctor's note for do not take his recess away. He needs it to burn off excess energy and to stimulate his mind and totally get his mind detached. Like no school, just freedom. Like I don't care if he sits by himself on the, on the playground, just if he is happy and just totally detached from any kind of stimulation and thinking. And we have a doctor's note. Somehow it got taken out of his IEP not to take recess away. So now every chance she gets, she takes his recess away. But then she says she does it, that gray area comes in. She says, no, I didn't take his recess away. We walked in the hall and played with a ball. I said, first off, I said, that's against the rules. 
I said, because him and another teacher were in the hall playing with a ball last year, trying to calm him down and he was distracted and he got a warning. If it happens again, he would be suspended. I said, so now the principal is going back and doing it. She said, well, that was a different teacher. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So like, what kind of, there's got to be some kind of legal option here. Like, you know, money, money, money. That is it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yep. And um, one of the attorneys that I have spoken to has had two other families that has sued North Kansas City School District, and they have won. North Kansas City is a, is a habitual offender for continuing and dragging this out for years. The shortest case took nine years to complete. Damn. Nine oh. years. Because they will continually drag it out. So what is, with him having issues in that class, though, what is the reasoning for not putting him in a different class? Like, aren't they supposed to be trying to put him in a position where he can excel? And you know what I mean? Like, like they should be on top of that. It's it ain't working here. We need to put him over here where he can get better himself. And, you know, that was what yeah. we said for his safety and well-being and for him to be successful in school. And she said, absolutely not was her words. But, but why? Well, she doesn't give a reason. She just said, no, uh, that's it. Uh, that's all you get. I mean, as parents, if she says no, she says no. We plead our case. We give examples. Yeah, I mean, he's, they let As parents, she shouldn't fire. have no say so. You should be able to put your child wherever you see fit for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like I said, since back to school night before school started, actually, since the end of last year, his IEP was never completed that we asked for. Because she also said that the state of Missouri allows her 21 days to complete an IEP. And she said, we're going to take all 21 days. So then on day 21, it was a Sunday, they emailed me his IEP, and it still wasn't even correct. They chased, changed caseworkers, just for starters, changed caseworkers and didn't even update the caseworker name and the phone number. But they kept the IEP for 21 days. They've also let him expire out of a medical IEP, which supposedly what? is illegal, but the school says it's not that big of a deal. They've also taken three and a half pills from him when they had traveling nurses because they were uh -huh. trying, they were working with staffing. Um, it was a Tuesday. I brought in six pills for Gabriel to take for his midday dose. The next day I was called and told that Gabriel has two pills left. I said, I just brought some in yesterday. So then I had to call the district nurse. She had to go, it was a Friday afternoon and she told me how inconvenient it was that I was calling because now she had to spend the whole day Saturday going through all the school's records and all the kids' medicine bottles to find out if anybody else is missing medicine. Then Monday, I got a call saying, I need you to go get some more medicine and let me know what the cash price is. We found multiple students that were missing stimulant medications, and that nurse is no longer allowed to come back to the school. So they sent me a check. Wow. So basically, don't talk about it. Oh, we're going to talk talk about it. Yeah. You know, th this is how you're going to change something is you're going to you're going to put that publicity on it and eventually they're going to just want it to go away. Yeah. You know. So, the if nobody's the check, talking about it, they ain't got no reason to change nothing. The check, I actually took it back to the district office because the memo was left blank and I asked them specifically to put in the memo for stolen medication. I made them reissue me a check with it stating in the memo for stolen medication. And now I have a copy of that check as well. Wow. So it's from North wow. Kansas City District, and it actually states on the check because, like I said, my legal advice said, well, it's just a check. They could say it's like a lunch reimbursement or something. But because it says on there in the memo, stolen medication, there's my leg. Yeah. But trying to find, you know, nine years worth of attorney fees, that's, that's a lot. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's any lawyers that want to kind of give me and Jessica a little try here, but let me tell you, I have more than two tubs worth of documentation. I have multiple, multiple things, and I'm not looking to strike it rich. I don't care. I love my life. I love my family. It's my kids that come home every day from school saying, so-and-so said this, and it's not a kid. 
kids aren't the problem here. Yeah. It's the teachers. Teachers said this today, you know, I mean, just like uh, one of the teachers, the vice principal told my daughter, my eight-year-old daughter the other day, watch your posture while she's walking down the hall. She's eight years old. It's not, hey, you look pretty. I like your hair. I like your dress. No. Right. Watch your posture. She goes, mom, why did you call me a bad name? I said, baby, that's that's not a bad name. I said, this is posture. She goes, why is she telling me that? She's mean. I mean, they will point out every flaw, not you look pretty. You're doing well today. You're doing nice. You're a nice kid. Nothing. No, it's you did this. You did this. You did this. Don't do that. This is wrong. Like no positivity. Like the, the daily, every day, the kids come home. I sit down with my notebook. They tell me what happened. Who said what? how the day went and that's where we go with and i'm like you are doing so good at school today right. no i'm not they tell me i'm doing bad and i'm like i don't care what they say you are a good, good person i mean it's up to us parents to tell our kids are good our kids are good people because right. the school it's like fort knox we got walked out by the police officer today harris is also called the clay county what? sheriff on our son but here's the kicker. We got to the school before the sheriff did. They called, she goes, well, so they called the sheriff on your child too? Yep, last year. Last year. What yep. is that? Like, why would you possibly need a sheriff for a seven year old? And How old is your kid? He was seven last, or no, no he's 10 he, now. He's, uh, he was, he was nine. nine. Okay, even so, yeah. like why would you need to call the sheriff for a 10 year old? And granted, you would look at our son and you would think that he was 12 or 14. You oh, okay. can't see Nick, but Nick's six foot nine. Yeah. So he, he's a so, large person. Our little guy is <laughs> five, five, eight. five, eight. He's five, eight, wears a men's nine and a half shoe. And I get told when he steps out of his 12 inch by 12 inch tile square in the lunch line. Wow. Find me an autistic the problem kid I'm that doesn't is... have any ticks and twitches. They're coming home with bruises on them. Like the, the teachers are restraining them and putting hands on them. That's what bothers me the most about this whole situation. And they won't release any video footage because uh, now that's the thing is that parents have to release any video footage to the school. But the school will not even give me any medical records of my son's medication times because it's a private record and Gabriel's not old enough to sign for his own records. I said, yeah, I know. I'm his guardian. I'm his mom. I, I made him. So what's his is mine. Like, I don't, I don't know how else to say this. Well, no, that's not true. Not whenever it comes to medical records. So they won't even give me his medication times, but the nurse actually told me his stimulant medicine. The doctor told, put the prescription. He's to take it at 1230. This was last year, 1230. We kept noticing that he was having more issues where it was more triggers, more twitches, more of his you know, autistic traits were happening about two to three o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. So I asked the nurse, when are you giving it to him? He's supposed to get it at 1230, right? He gets it at eight o'clock in the morning before he goes to school. He was getting it as early as 930 in the morning. So the doctor wow. had a problem with his potentially being overdosed and he wrote an astrogram to the school. Now I can't get the records. You'd probably have to get a lawyer and like subpoena those records, huh? Mm -hmm. Again, that, even that's more anymore. money. There's yeah, got to be some, some type anymore. of program or some type of something out here where you, you guys could get somebody to handle that, you know, legal aid or something. Yeah. And today when we were talking to the principal in the hallway, she made sure that the resource officer was right there. I, I, first I, time ever. First time ever. She made sure the school resource officer was right there next next to us. And that she, after accusing her of not being accountable, saying and not doing. And why does she say everything that goes and doesn't hear us as parents? And she said, we've been trying to schedule Gabriel's IEP meeting since the first day of school. I said, well, that's funny. I asked before school. I actually asked at the end of last year and I'm still getting denied. I said, have you read my messages? And his IEP teacher was right there. She said, I haven't checked my messages. And I said, well, well there you go. That's another <laughs> thing. Your staff needs to be accountable. 
here we are parents begging for the best for our kids and you got one person over here saying i haven't checked my messages and she goes harris looked at the officer and said you need to leave now so then we were escorted out of the school so that's how everything ended was we still won our iap meeting <laughs> right so we were escorted out of the school yeah that's ridiculous and i asked her I said, are you going to take me all the way to the, my car like you did the other staff member this morning? She said, no. <laughs> why? I don't get why they won't transfer the students. Why is she holding the grudge on that? Oh. Especially if they're saying the student is causing all this trouble, you would think that they would want to get rid of them, that they would gladly transfer them. Right. Yeah. And but they would lose funding. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, and I they remember you saying this. So it all comes down to money all the way around. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, you go to the super, I'm supposed to be getting a call from the superintendent tomorrow. I will not hold my breath because I've been promised this many, 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 many times. But however, um, Dr. Cronky or Dr. Cronk or something, that's Harris's direct supervisor with the school district. I have called her. She stands directly responsible. She stands up for her principal. Her principal gets to do whatever she wants, say however she wants, do any kind of discipline she wants, anything she wants. She stands behind the principals, will not have any other reasoning put in front of her. So she's just as bad as Harris. I mean, if you can't break the shell, I've tried proving to her. She goes, I don't care what you have. What my principal, they've been put in that position for a reason. That's crazy. But she also denied my son a transfer. Yeah, that does. So, and then she pulled our daughter off the bus today, and I told her that was totally unacceptable. She knows that my mother lives with us. We also have multiple neighbors that we trust with our children, and we have protocols. If something happens and we are not home, you go to this house. They're not right. home, go to this house. I mean... Everybody up and down the street here knows my children. And, and I don't have a fear with my children. Right. But it was not a problem. She went and they took her off the bus and took her to the principal's office. I told her that was totally unacceptable and out of line. I said, you should not interrupt her day because something else happened. She has a routine. You stick with the routine. Everybody who has autistic children knows you stick with your routine. You do not break it for nothing. So they didn't even tell my daughter what was going on. We get in the office. She's crying. She thinks something bad happened. Yeah. She got pulled off the bus and nobody will tell her why. And I told Harris that was completely out of line. You know my mother lives with us. We have our own home life under control. It's the school that is interfering with everything. And they're they're doing all this intentionally because they don't like you. Yeah, you, you know that. <laughs> we actually actually yesterday we got a call from the nurse uh -huh. just to, uh, because Tinley went in and that was the only phone call we got yesterday was from the nurse. Last night Jessica's story comes out. Today we had two missed calls, no voicemails, no dojo responses, nothing, and then all of a sudden. We get the phone call, which I I do not answer the phone calls. I wait for them to leave me a message. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll leave me a dojo message. I just don't know what harassment they're doing. There's no other way I could say it. Why would a school call every day but leave no message and not try to message you on the portal either? Just call right. for what reason? So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Gabriel, like, killed a fly or something at school and they called to tell me about it. I don't know. They're not going to leave we messages because they're something. not going to give you that proof to use against them. I know. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So that's why we do that. That's what we've been told to do. That's what we do. So that's why as soon as I had that, you know, on my, my phone that it typed out what the message was, I was like, oh my God, what did he do? So Jessica's story, she came out with her and Wyatt yesterday and I was like, all right, it's on. And so that's when we decided to join in. Yeah. So I, I, I tell you, if you are a parent going through this, just be prepared for her wrath. 
Because I haven't went through it yet. Like I said, I just enrolled him. He hasn't yeah. went yet, but I, I'm but sure no, I'm going to be dealing with problems with the school as well. Specifically Grace Moore, because she's on alert. She knows. She obviously knew about us. Yeah. So here today, I mean, here Tinley got on, she got yelled at or corrected for her posture this morning. And then this afternoon, Gabriel, like they were, they were waiting, everything else, you know, stuff like that. So if you are a Grace Moore student and she can pin you down to watching, commenting, or doing anything about this, I mean, I know Jessica supports this. Nick and I support this. And yeah. we'll support any other family because, hey, we're in it together. I guarantee that there's nothing that any of us are going to say that one of us hasn't said, you know what? Yep, us too. Yeah. And so Harris, Harris is not going to stop, period. Look at how much staffing changes have been there. There was Dr. Wheeler. As soon as he left, there was a whole bunch of teachers that left. Last year, a whole bunch of teachers that left. There are not very many teachers. Sorry. There's not very many teachers there now, like this year, right. that, have, there last that were year. there even last year. It's almost a completely new school. And Harris has been you? there, what, three or four years from what Jessica said? Uh, two, two as a president, or principal. Uh, principal. Uh, is this year five? One is a... I think it's she was the vice, vice principal, principal three years prior. Uh, wow. So I think she's been there a total of five years. What amazes me the most is that they're, like, not even willing to, like, listen or work with you. Like, they're just telling you... Oh, who gives a damn how you feel? We're doing things our way. Yep. Your child's going to do what we want them to yep. do. And that seems backwards to me. I, I feel like they should be listening to you and trying to apply your um, concerns, you know? No, but she did tell me in a meeting, we need to try to co-parent and do discipline together. This was one of the times that Gabriel was, I think this was the time he was pinned in the closet by the same kids because we had put in his IEP that if there was a sub, because this was a visual thing that kept happening every time the teacher, she was pregnant, the teacher was gone, then these kids would basically jump Gabriel. And so we right. had to put in there that he would be removed if there was a sub. Well, supposedly Harris amended it, and therefore we didn't have to have a meeting. We just trusted her that she did what she said. Right? Wrong. <laughs> no, don't do that. That bad. <laughs> That's very bad. So, are these other kids, are they autistic? Is he in a, like, specifically an autistic class, or is he, like, in population with other kids? Yeah. He just gets pulled out for his special, you know, certain special classes that he can get some more one-on-one -on -one help with. Right. One of them's supposed so to be So that's why he's that, being messed uh, with, is because he's autistic. Yep. Yep. I, I got it. I, I was but, wondering if they were autistic as well, because I was trying to figure out why they were targeting him. Well, we've tried filling out bully reports because Grace Moore is a very strict bully policy and he is not being bullied. Even though he, these kids have jumped him over five times, he is not being bullied. He's, he's coming home with bruised ribs and he's not being bullied. Pee and blood as, as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, how does that work? No. Mm -mm. Nope, he's not bullied. So in his IEP, we had it put to where when this teacher was gone, he would be pulled into an alternate classroom. Well, she was putting him in like second grade. He's a third grader or fourth grader, fourth grader at this time. Fourth grader at this time. She was putting him in the first grade classroom, second grade. One day he went to kindergarten, and I said, why isn't he being put in, like, another class in his grade? Well, we didn't think of that. So then we had it put to that. Well, then teacher was gone. He wasn't pulled out. And so we got a call. He got suspended because there was an altercation in the coat closet. These three boys came up and started sucker punching him and everything else in the, in the coat closet. Come to find out, Harris said, well, we never got around to amending that, so that's technically not in his IEP, so I'm still going to suspend him. But we should co-parent and get on the same page with discipline. I said, no, we're going for ice cream. She didn't like that. <laughs> and see, that's what bothers me the most is my son's nonverbal. Yep. And those are the kids that they target yeah. because they can't tell on them. My son can't tell me if somebody's hitting him or touching him or, you know, and that's what scares me the most. Yeah. I mean, it's 
It's a mess, man. Somebody has power. to say something or do something about this. We're going to keep just giving publicity to this until yep. it catches some yep. kind of wave or something, until somebody does something about it. I'm hoping well, somebody I mean, will see this and, and, and contact me and say, hey, I can help, you know? I, I, yeah. that I, I, I would be speechless because it's Nick and I go through enough stress just of, oh, my God, what now? You know, to hear your kid come home and cry every day of just feeling so down on themselves that they can't do anything right yeah. and yeah. always being pointed out with everything wrong. And it's, yeah, they're kids. They're going to do stuff wrong. They are. They're kids. Yeah. But to tell them, you know what? You did a good job today. You you did this. Oh, man, that was so good. Like, no, they don't get that. They just cry. It's so emotionally draining. And you are, you're stuck in this cycle with your own kids. Yeah. You'd be surprised how far that goes. Just the littlest bit of encouragement. They are especially so, to an autistic child. Yeah, yeah, they are so, so, so down on themselves. And we tried to build them up. And you know what? Yeah, you may have spilled the milk. And it's they are like, Mom, I'm sorry, I spilled my milk. And I'm like, but you cleaned it up. It looks yeah. great. You did such a good job. Accidents happen. And they'll, they'll cry, truly cry over spilled milk. Because they think that the wrath of God is going to come down and get them because that's what they get at school all day. Yeah. I mean. And that's come concerning, on. too, if they're expecting you to yell at them. Like, what type of treatment is are they really receiving? Like, maybe what you know about is only the tip of it, you know? It yeah. sounds like it goes a lot deeper than that. So, I mean, if there's anybody that can help us fight for our kids, yeah. that's, that's what we want. That's all right. we've, uh, we've been asking the school is when are you going to put your ego aside and fight and do what's right for my child? And they will look you in the face and say, well, we're trying. No, you're not. Your ego is too big. You can't put your pride aside to look at the kid. These people, truly, there is a job fit for every human being in this world. There really, really is. And some people are not meant to nurture our children and there are multiple people in this school in charge with authority of our children that have no business no business at all none <laughs> i mean it is my kids will sit down and just cry to you over a day's worth of school right my other Any concern is having these kids mixed together you you got autistic kids that that really need that special care and that special attention, and you're just throwing them into the general population with kids that don't understand them. That's gonna bully them. I don't, I think that they should be separated. They shouldn't be out there with these kids. And they, they need to be with people who know them and understand them and can reach them. And Grace Moore also has a non favoritism policy. But the teacher, I have six different messages from the teacher saying that she got information from a trusted student that Gabriel did this or Gabriel said that it came from another trusted student and I said what is a trusted student is that the same as favoritism she said no it's just one that I count on I, <laughs> I define that as a favoritism so whatever Gabriel says he could tell you the sky is blue but right. the trusted student will say nope it's red and the teacher uh, it's red it's red <laughs> red sky. wow and both of our kids are high functioning, verbal, right. you know, very smart kids. They're just, in some aspects, not challenged. Mm -hmm. In others, it's, you know, people don't understand them. Right. That's what it boils down to. They just don't have, they're just not capable of understanding these kids. They're not trained properly to deal with these types of kids. It sounds like the whole staff needs to be fired. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it real. Yep. <laughs> well, I can say the ones that we had very positive communication from uh -huh. are no longer there. Yeah. They're not there. I mean, even the choir teacher, let's throw her out there for what she is. You either make it or you break it. You're either the chosen one or you're not. Right. And I mean, she had Gabriel suspended last year at a choir class because this one girl told him to shut up three times, and he turned around, and he walked out of the classroom. So Gabriel got suspended, darn it, because in his IEP it says that he can leave, sit outside the classroom if he needs to de-escalate. 
If he's right. out there for more than five minutes, then yes, I mean, you know, he needs to come back in or intervene or something. But a girl can tell him to shut up, shut up three times, making right. her stop playing the piano because it's so loud and disrupt the whole choir class. But darn it, he walked out of that classroom and followed his IEP and sat outside the classroom door to calm down. He got suspended. Right. The girl, girl who said shut up, nothing. Hmm. And they don't Here's understand that. And that's another that's another autistic trait is, you know, the kids when they when they start stimming, they start getting overwhelmed. That's what they do. They go off by themselves. My son will go yep. sit in the corner and just rock for yep. two hours. And like that's what they do. So when she's telling him to shut up and he's getting overstimulated and stressed out, he's doing what he does. He leaves and he goes and he calms down. Yep. And somebody her, who understands you. that wouldn't punish him for that. Yeah. I you know, her, if anything, they would see him getting aggravated and say, hey, would you like to, you know, take a few minutes? Would you like to go outside? I, you seem kind of irritated. That's what the teachers should be telling them. Uh, Take them out and talk to them. Calm them down. Try to, you know, try to intervene yeah. some way. Yeah. Man. By the way, this is Gabriel. Uh, hi, Gabriel. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Good. He's a nice kid. Yeah. He is very affectionate. Yeah. And you, are, you know, they say autistic sleep. kids aren't really, affectionate, really, affectionate really but does. my son is. My son. Well, he loves to cuddle and hug, and he's very affectionate. And it surprises a lot of people that have that have evaluated him because they're like, typically, autistic kids don't like to be touched and loved on. Yep. 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 So there are certain people he's he's not a big hugger until he gets to know you. But yeah, right. He, I think I think he's scared of his mama if he doesn't give me a kiss. So. <laughs> My yep. son, that he'll go, give me a kiss. My, my son, yeah. <laughs> yep. But since day one, when he came home from the hospital the first night, I mean, he never went to a crib. Like, he always he, he slept with us from day uh, one. We taught him how to yep. love. We've always been affectionate with him. So that's what he learned. Like, you know, it's what you teach him. A kid doesn't come out and just be hateful. Yeah. If I you mean, teach them hate, they'll learn to hate. You teach them how to love, they'll be lovers. Right. They're not, and not right born now, not hateful. That conflicting. Yeah, so I feel like we're losing control of our parenting abilities because what we parent at home is totally flipped inside out and washed away at school. It is you and know, it confuses them, love, you know, grace, compassion, forgiveness, you know, things like that. We we you know give somebody the benefit of the doubt, you know, forgive, forget, love, second chances. School? No. You looked at me sideways. You get the maximum punishment. How much can I right. give you? You are the worst. You are wrong, and it's horrible. And that confuses them because they're used to a certain regimen at home, and then they go to school, and they're treated a different way. And now they're questioning themselves. Like, they don't know how to act in certain situations because each place that they're at has different rules and consequences and, and treats situations differently. Now, he is held accountable. I mean, yeah. he does wrong. He's in trouble. Yes. Absolutely. And so is Tinley. But, my God, if you drop a paper clip on the floor or a pencil on the floor, okay, pick it up. Yeah. Keep going on with life. There are big problems in this world. And a lot of these problems aren't problems. Right. Yeah, that, that's crazy. So, there's there's a whole lot. There's there's a whole lot. And, I mean, my heart breaks that Jessica's little guy, Wyatt, is going through this. And when she said that she had over 35 other families, honest to God, I broke down. I lost it. I lost it. Because I know what we've went through. And I know what my babies come home. I mean, they leave. And we try to have a positive good morning, you know, hype them up that, you know, it's going to be a good day, you know, and right. stuff like that and, and everything. And we send them out the door and we're just like, God, take care of them. <laughs> Bring them home safe. Yep. And I mean, you know, for society, the way that it is now with schools, but that's not really a factor in my brain. It's the staff at the school that's hurting my kids. And we're right. preparing 
preparing for outsiders coming in to hurt our kids, but we're not prepared for the internal staff that you have hired that might be educated. I mean, and education is one thing, but if you don't love and have any kind of affection for children and your job and what you're doing and you're just looking for that paycheck, that's what's going on on here. Yeah, you that's the that case. Dollar, your number heard this cattle through, stand there, shut up, get through line, and don't say nothing. Because look at the transfer. They're, say, they're saying, oh, we can't transfer them, you know, mm -hmm. because of that. So that's what it's all about. They're just yeah. there for the paycheck. They're there for the funding. That's all they focus on. They don't really care about the, and I, is it, a, it's okay if I say, <laughs> I'm seeing him and I'm like, man, I want to like watch kind of what I say, you know what I mean? But, uh, cause I don't want to add more negativity to what's already there, oh, but they, 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 should, they should, they should care more and they should really be trying to fix this. They, they should, they should. And that's a sad part. And I mean, I want to say stuff and I can't say it. <laughs> well, Nick, Nick told him that he was recording them today. Hold yeah, on and that's his and, right. And yes, and he told her he was recording them today, and they made sure that we were pinned down in a hallway, being video monitored. You know, you can see the cameras, so I know I'm on their camera system, and we had the officer right there, and you could just see the mat, the meanness, the black heart, and just the aggression just in her face, and just how cold she was. She's like that with every yeah. every interaction we've ever had with her. That so, so I mean, she really showed her true point. Right. I mean, that's just it was just a normal day. That's just how she normally is. Is that this is an inconvenience to her day. She was supposed to leave at four thirty. Here it is, almost five o'clock, and we're keeping her there because this. So that's that's her job, though. Yeah. <sighs> what? Man. Give you a kiss. I mean, like I said, you know, we just got to keep putting it out there. You know, the louder, the louder your your voice is, is you know, that's how you force the hand. Yeah. So, exactly. so obviously they're concerned about what they heard last night. <laughs> oh yeah. He wanted to go to bed and he wanted to kiss me, but you want anybody to see? Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's your right though. Don't let them tell you you can't record. You can't do. You, you can do every bit of that. Right. You can. But say what you want, you, you know. Here's the thing is that a legal advice, a lawyer had told me, play by their rules because if it comes out in court that you didn't sign that document. So. And you didn't, the you didn't sign it? Is, no, I didn't sign it and I didn't right. record. Absolutely. I mean, today she, he said he had his phone up. He said, I'm recording you. And she said, that's fine. What? Okay. But yeah, so she can't say anything else. Last week, because yeah. the Missouri law is that one consenting individual in the party has to consent to being video or recorded. Well, if I'm invited to the IEP meeting and I want it recorded, then I'm a consenting party to that. So me, that's all that has to know. Nobody has to know that I'm recording. I want to because it's my son and I want this just to reference. I've asked him before, years before. Every year I've recorded the IP, but this last year, whenever she did not put in there the amendment and she admitted to us that she forgot to put in there the amendment and was suspending him because he wasn't pulled from the classroom when there was a sub and he got pinned in the, the closet and the whole staff, which happened two additional times after it was in the IP, that's when she fought me and said, I am no longer allowed to record without authorization until I sign that form. Wow. So. And, the, and, and the authorities won't do nothing about it. Nobody. Nope. Because school, school is deemed a safe place. So even when you took him down there with bruised ribs and like spitting blood, they, they couldn't do nothing about that. I, uh, I took the um, medical... Children's Mercies, discharged uh, papers and everything and had it mm -hmm. on the police report. Yeah. And the investigator looked into it and came back with, they can't do anything because the school is deemed a safe place. I said, well, what about the children? Can I go after the children or their parents? And they said the school wouldn't release the children's names. And Gabriel, 
told them who they were and we had a yearbook and we pointed them out and the school wouldn't give them the addresses so they didn't know who the parents were how is the school deemed a safe place though when they're coming home with bruises on them and like obviously yeah. obviously yeah. that that's not the case so you need to do something about it yeah yep it's a cycle and you call the district office and they just stand behind their principal and the principal has full say so of any disciplinary or any actions or any policies or anything that goes on in the school. Wow. And Gabriel was not allowed to take his cell phone on a field trip last year whenever they went down to the Nelson Atkins Museum. Uh huh. But the other kids were. That's what I was just getting ready to ask. Was everybody else? Yep. Other kids were. And whenever I called her about it, she said, Well, I told them not to. <laughs> Well, she physically took Gabriel's cell phone from him. Uh huh. So, so why didn't she we got go around and take all the kids' phones? It didn't occur to her. It did. She didn't thought they followed the rules. I said, "Well, are they all suspended?" She said, "I can't suspend that many kids." I said, "Gabriel would have got suspended." It occurred to her to go take your son's phone. Oh yeah. So now we have those air tags that we put on our kids' clothing every day. Mm hmm. That's that's. Just the point we are i mean seriously i want to know where my child is at every point in the day yeah so we got the air tags and we clip them onto our kids clothing and when she finds that out we'll get in trouble for that i'm sure because it'll break some kind of rule for something <laughs> I, that's I mean, so I mean, ridiculous yeah i mean somebody takes my kid down to the nelson atkins museum and i mean he's full of female staff members and he's got to go pee I'm pretty sure that he's going to go in there unsupervised. And if anything happens, I want him to be able to call me. If he gets right. separated, I want him to be able to call me. I want to have communication with my children. Nope. He All these other kids, children. though, are not autistic, right? The other kids that had their phones. So this is clear, clear discrimination. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Our kids have to check their cell phones in with their teacher every single day. I said, how many times have they gotten in trouble for being on their phones? And they said, oh, well, they have it. We just know that they have them. Wow. So. Yeah. But it just seems like, like they this school just does not like autistic children. They just look at them as a nuisance. Yep. Yeah. But the reason our 8-year-old and 10-year-old have a phone is because of the school. The school bus has been in an accident three times. Damn. And we have not been notified until I call the bus barn. Hey, my kid's bus is 30 minutes late. Where are they at? It, you know, what's going on? Oh, they were involved in an accident. They're assessing injuries. Please don't go. <laughs> what? You just woke up. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. yeah. And now you're so, sitting there worrying. You don't know what's happened to your child. Yeah. When you fly up to the scene yeah. and... The police officer knows me and says, they're okay. <laughs> yeah. The police know our children for very good reasons because I told, we've raised our kids. You don't have to like a police officer, but you will respect them, period. Yeah. Every holiday, we take our police officers a goodie tray. Christmas morning, we get up, we do our stockings, we take a goodie tray to the police station, we come home, we do presents. Thanksgiving, that's our first stop, is the police. Every single holiday, we are trying our damnedest to raise good human beings and we're just getting knocked down every chance we can there's good there's good cops out there definitely okay. I, I got several police they're officers absolutely. in my family oh, yeah absolutely. yeah exactly. but that's but you they're know being nobody you know likes to get a speeding ticket no matter what right but you will respect them they're just being yep. they're being taught that police are bad and you know i remember when i was yep. a kid we used to chase down the cops and they used to have baseball cards you remember that <laughs> they would come to, and we used to run up to the car and get baseball cards from the cops and they yeah. we couldn't wait till the cops came through the neighborhood <laughs> when, when we would go <laughs> like to we were waiting on them yeah. like that it was yeah. like our friends and, I mean, you know hey you know, so officer friendly's like got baseball cards children, i mean you know that's that's the kind of kids that we're dealing with is that whenever they like when harris called the clay county sheriff i was just thinking oh my goodness are we going to know this one you know because we know quite a few of them and right. they show up and everything and she said well i hope you know that i had to call a sheriff i was like it doesn't matter you're going to do what you're going to do anyways 
So then she put in the report that parents gave permission. And I had to fight her on that. I said, we in no way gave you permission. You had already called them and we showed up before the, the sheriff did. So anyways, but it's just, so here, Gabriel's just trying to be a kid. He doesn't have the mental capacity to understand what he did wrong. Right. And come to find out, he went to the bathroom and didn't have a hall pass. Wow. That was oh. the sum of the story. And then uh, Harris. And you said the they bathroom. suspended him too, right? He got suspended? He got suspended today. Yeah, he stepped, he stepped on a staple. And then he went to the teacher. She said, you'll be okay. Go sit down. And he had his shoe off. And yeah. this other student kept telling him to put a shoe back on, put a shoe back on, put a shoe back on. And she went and told him to be safe. He had to have a shoe on. Well, he had a slide. And so apparently whenever he went to go into the classroom, his foot shifted off the, his heel shifted off the slide. So the staple poked him on the side of the heel. Yeah. So just something along that. And then the other student came over and grabbed his foot, lifted it up in the air, and he told him, let it go, let it go, let it go. And then he kicked him because they wouldn't let his foot go. Wow. So Gabriel is now suspended. That, that seems to be their, their, uh, their means of punishment. You know, they just suspend them just to get rid of them. It I don't even say punishment because it wasn't not a punishment, but just that's how they deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, just get rid of them. Just yep. We don't want to deal with them. And Gabriel said we were the first ones to ask him if he was okay. The teacher told him he'll be okay. Go sit down and put your shoe on. Wow. So. <sighs> Something's got to be done at some point. I mean, we got to keep blasting it. We'll keep blasting it. And, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, IEPs mean it's nothing. Sucks. So, I mean, the school... We have everything in his IEP, like a calm down box. He's supposed to have one with headphones on the bus. He does not. Um, and then he's supposed to have a bag that he could take with him, you know, through the school and everything. Sometimes he has it, sometimes he doesn't, but they're running low on resources, so sometimes they have to share. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's multiple different things. And I mean, his IEP can say one thing, but like Harris told me when I called the state on her for not following his IEP for the third time, uh, that we could prove that she was not following it. She said, if you call the state on me again, I'm going to tell them that we're just underfunded and understaffed, and then they won't do anything about it. Man, I wish she could have recorded that. And then she turns around and calls the state on us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why? Just to be spiteful. Oh, yeah. She don't like you because you stand up for your child and you speak out and you, you fight the system. They want you to just shut up and just sit down and let them run things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why they're messing with you is because you're the one that's saying, we're not putting up with this shit. Yeah. Exactly. And we've asked yeah. through the, the messaging back and forth with the teachers. How are they doing? You know, and if you ask them how they're doing, that is like three paragraphs of negativity. And they're like, but we have faith he'll improve. You know, and it's like, okay, I mean, like, is he turning his homework in? Is he, you know, like doing rules or, you know, it's just all, it's all negative. There's, there's nothing positive in there. I guess they're the telling you there. something like that is one thing, but for them to be going to these kids, Oh, yeah. And telling these kids that they're being bad and, and saying these things, that, that that shouldn't be allowed, you know? Yeah, correct. It's one thing to tell you, but when your kids are coming home and their self-esteem is just crushed because their teachers are talking down to them, you know, the teachers are supposed to be helping them and lifting them up. No, yeah. there was <sighs> – he had a good kindergarten teacher. He really, really did. He yeah. had a good kindergarten teacher. Um, one of his teachers, anytime he'd go up to him. She said, quit uh -huh. tattling. Go sit down. Quit tattling. Quit tattling. Go sit down. So that's when Gabriel's suspensions truly started. Yeah. Because Gabriel quit tattling, but he also started taking care of himself as well. So that's when his suspensions truly yeah. started is because he kept getting told, quit tattling. Quit tattling. Right. So he quit tattling. 
So, but there's been, like I said, we've had, we have had in the past some very good teachers, but they have left. They've all left. They've yeah. left. Yeah. Yep. All the good ones, I can probably 100% say are gone. Yeah. That's what Jessica was saying yesterday. She said there was they're a few gone. teachers that were really good, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're all gone. But I if mean, they don't follow this regiment, you know, they're just going to get rid of them anyway. Yeah. Right. They just got so. rid of the nurse, but I mean, she did some things in my book that I didn't really agree with, and that's the one that I couldn't get the records from. Now, whether this is true or not, she said that the district has control of giving me those records, and I never got them. Truth or not, I don't know, but I mean, I don't know if the nurse made Harris mad and she controlled it and had her pulled or what, but um I mean, I don't know. Now we've got a new school nurse. Right. And the last time we were going through nurses, medication came up missing. So, I mean, right. <laughs> as parents, it's just, it's a crapshoot. I mean, what, what, what is the day going to bring? Not. And, and that's another worry when you got to worry about them giving medicine to your child, yeah. you know, and he, he's got to take medicine. Not only are you worried about his well-being, but now you're worried about his, you know, his medication being given to him wrong. I call every day and say did he have his medicine today now both of them take medicine and then they've started saying that we can't go to the office the nurse's office we have to uh give it to the receptionist and she'll take it to the nurse i said in what state i'm federally protected that this is a privacy violation so you need to send me to the nurse or send the nurse up here where we can be in a private room now right. they didn't like that they didn't, they really no. didn't like that one. Mm -mm. They were really mad. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Wow. Yeah. Oh. I said, that's, that's not a school district thing. I said, that's not a principal thing. I said, that's not a state thing. I said, I'm federally protected. You get the nurse down here and get me some privacy or let me go to the nurse's office. You can take me if you want, but you will step outside. So. They, yeah, they didn't like that one. So pretty much North Kansas City School District is jacked with the Bears' den. Yeah. In several families. Yeah, there's clearly so. two moms, two mama bears that are not happy right now. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot more, more than that. <laughs> yeah. Because Jessica was saying her inbox was filling up last night, and I had people in my inbox, and between right. us, we had probably 35 people reach out. And, yeah. you know, I've had – had a few today their kids aren't in elementary school right now uh-huh but they've had the same kind of issues as well so there is a common denominator here but you know how do we figure this out yeah it seems like your hands are tied in so many they, different they ways are. though like yeah like, especially when you got the principal manipulating the whole situation and when she should be working with you to solve it. <laughs> you would yeah. think. You so would think so. if she denies any transfer, then how are we, and we've been advised not to go after the school district while our kids are currently in the school. That's why we tried to get them out of the district. Uh -huh. So how are we supposed to seriously go after the school when she will deny our kids to get out of the district? Does she know what we're trying to do? Because she won't let them leave. She's got her claws in them and she don't want to let them go, but she don't want to take care of them either. They're her biggest problem is what, you know, she's told us before. I don't know any other child that has this much disciplinary action against them in front of Gabriel. Right. Well, she obviously hasn't dealt with autistic children that much. I mean, there are a lot to handle, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, somebody no that says something like that has no idea. Well, yeah. she just said, doesn't care what she says to who when as long as she has a smile on her face she's appropriate wow. and anytime she calls and has you on speakerphone just so you know she's recording you so i always tell her i can't hear you i can't hear you take the phone off speaker and then she does that's why you you should start recording look it's your it's your first amendment right freedom of the press who gives a fuck what she says if you're talking to her, you have the right to record that conversation. Well, two can play games. Yeah. I mean, I've caught on. She's She's been, she's getting so predictable. 
Right. But I already have it mapped out, the conversation and everything. That's why whenever we went in to get him, I said, when is our happy meeting so he can get back in school so he can get his education? Right. And he said, oh, Friday morning. And I said, okay, let me know who his new teacher is going to be. And she will not allow it. She said, no, no, nothing you can do is going to make it happen. No. Do they not have, have like a, a class just specifically for autistic children? Because I'm no. not liking that they're mixing the, the students. Like, I don't, I wouldn't want my son in that situation. No, no not that I'm aware of. Uh, I know that we wouldn't qualify for anything. Um, then that seems to be the issue right there. The school needs to have some kind of program. Well, if they they're going to have autistic kids in that school, they need to have something for them. They have a special autism educator that's supposed to be at Grace Moore to give our kids services. Uh -huh. As of, what did we say, three years? Three years ago. I haven't had a minute of service from this special mythical educator that's specialized in autism. Right. So, and if you ask for progress reports and ask them about it and call them out on it, anything, we're supposed to be getting weekly reports from their uh, special teachers and their primary teachers. I have to ask for them. I give them until the next Monday because I figure, you know what, that's Monday through Friday. Okay. They probably had a busy week. You know, I'm not the only parent that's addressing them. Grace, compassion, forgiveness, you know, benefit of the doubt, kind of like how we act as parents and human beings. Let them have Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Hey, I didn't get a progress report. How was his week last week? Is everything okay? Might get it right. okay, might not. Generally, I don't. But it's in his IEP that the parent will get some kind of weekly briefing. No the only time you hear about it is when he's done something wrong and they want to discipline him. That's all you hear yep. about. You don't hear about what he good. does good because nope. that's not what they're paying attention to. All they're paying attention to is the negative stuff. Yep. Exactly. So <laughs> they don't know what he's doing good because they're not paying attention to they're it. They're starting to come down harder on my daughter too, on our, our daughter. Yep. They are. And so uh, our daughter has said, she's following me. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, mom, every time our class goes to leave our classroom, she's right there. And Gabriel's been telling me that too. And I said, no, maybe, you know, and it honestly was freaking me out. I was like, okay, these kids are starting to get some paranoia, you know, stuff like that, things like that. No, I'm starting to believe them because she'll tell me, Mom, Harris was right there whenever I went to go to recess, and I had to get out of the recess line because I needed to go to the bathroom. Well, I'll be damned. Harris called me earlier and told me Tinley got out of the recess line and went to the bathroom. And then the same day, Tinley will say, you know what, this, and it's, and you ask her about it. I said, what are you doing, Follow my kids around? She goes, I'm the principal. I just have to observe certain students, so I have to be certain places. <laughs> like, what? Wow. Yeah. I can understand that, but how conveniently every time my kids are on the move, you are there. Like, you know their schedule. That school is pretty large for you just to coincidentally be every time that Gabriel walks out of his door or Tinley walks out of her door, there you are. Well, and that's just proof that they're being targeted. It's very coincidental. Yeah, yeah they're, my, they're being targeted. She's purposely messing with them. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean... Tinley's starting to get cracked down on quite more, you know, more and more too. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a trickle effect. It's not just Gabriel. Now it's going on to Tinley. And I, I asked Harris point blank in front of everybody, the IEP meeting and everything. And I said, what have I done to you that's so personal? If you have something with me, I'm an adult. We can talk. But right. you leave my kids out of it. I said, my kids are a totally different thing. I said, if they've done something... They're children. You should be an adult. And she's no, I'm just doing my job. Really? You're not doing your job because if you were doing your job, you would be addressing the damn issue. Right. So, no. Ugh, that shit pisses me off, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is, I mean, we had some issues while Dr. Wheeler was there. And it was from his specials, the IEP woman, 
Uh-huh. I don't, I don't know what, I don't even know. Female, what I don't called. have nice words. I'm trying to, I'm digging deep here to find something nice. Uh, the female who overseen his IEP, um, we had issues with her and we could never get her to come to the IEP meetings. We had to fight. She, like Jessica was told, told us that we had to wait for his annual IEP and that we couldn't just do a meeting on spur of the moment because there were so many staffing issues that it took so much time to get everybody together. Or what uh, was the one where she was on FaceTime? Or at a whatever, soccer at game. At a soccer game. And she says, is this meeting almost over? I In don't have time to, I don't have time yeah. for this. So we're going wow. to an IEP meeting with our son yeah. while she's on FaceTime on her phone and there's a bleacher full of parents. And I said, can she just get off there? I said, because I don't know any of these people and they don't need to know about my son's my son's business well all of this is supposed to be confidential anyway right between well, you and her people at her kids soccer game got to know yeah so but i mean anything that, that you guys address about your child should be confidential right, right. like she, she shouldn't be like blasting that in front of everybody right that should be i mean that should be illegal yeah <laughs> to be honest with you it should be but then again there are certain laws regarding an IEP, uh -huh. but she doesn't follow them. And all she has to do is tell the state that she's underfunded and understaffed and she'll get out of it again. Yeah. That's why I wish she would have got that recording of her saying that because you would have been able to prove that. I can't say anything. I know. Ugh. That's, that's aggravating. And she's just like, if you don't do, if you don't do what I say, then I'll just say this, and they're not going to do nothing about it anyway. She doesn't care, right? No fear of punishment, unless if you're the child, and then there's no compassion, grace, and forgiveness. It's corporal punishment. Wow. Yep. This is a whole mess, man. So this is, and you know, I, and I'm, and I keep meeting everybody, people every day that have the same issues. Like I, you know. It's, this is such a widespread problem, and, like, nobody's talking about it. And I'm wondering who's going to contact you tomorrow because their son got suspended. Or daughter. Or daughter got yeah. suspended tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Hold on. Tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday. I don't know. She's going to have a lot of beef if I really get called from the superintendent, and I've already made such a fuss about <laughs> demanding that Gabriel get moved rooms. Usually, and I do, I firmly believe this, when I really – really really tend to take a lot of her time uh, when she sends my kid i call her every hour for a follow-up i dojo message her every hour for a follow-up i prefer dojo message over phone calls but right. um i'm in constant contact with her until i get follow-up and then i have to think on that and then i need another follow-up so then i continue her day so if my child is suspended it's not a walk in the park for her. Right. right. No. So um, I'm hoping that I'm shaking and rattling some cages. I really, really hope that the superintendent is not just so lax on being confident in a principal and letting them rule the school and make the rules up as they go and change them and everything else and just have the full say through the whole school but i hope that the superintendent uh i believe she's new i think this might be her first year but i really really hope that she heeds to what's going on and truly 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 listens and sees anything because i mean i don't understand if this teacher has messaged me between her and the principal every single day since the start of school i mean how, how is that hair that how is that fair to any other student in her class if she is truly feeling the need to contact me every single day about my child right. what about the other 20 some odd students that are in that class Clearly, she's not paying attention to them students she's only worried about what your child's doing exactly. clearly yeah. The most yeah. beneficial thing, I mean, Harris couldn't pick her job off the floor whenever I said I was moving them. But I was also told by a parent that had this teacher last year that she is the most strictest teacher in the entire fifth grade. So that makes sense why my son drew the straw for her.
Yeah. So be before the day even starts, I mean, my kids don't even get a fair shake at school. Mm -hmm. And I mean, do they do things wrong? Every kid does. Yeah. But to this point, no. Anytime he's been suspended, just like his uh, behavioral doctor has said, he said everything is his autism. He is being punished for being autistic. He has. Absolutely. I forward him every single message. He has many clinical notes. He has written the state when Harris called the DFS on us. He called them. And, and we never heard from the state again. They were supposed to come over and look at our house. We had an appointment set up and everything else. They never showed up. And then we got a call saying our case was closed. So, I mean, our doctor has a lot of documentation as well. Yeah. So. Wow. I'm sorry you guys are going through that, man. Now I'm like, I'm, I'm like wondering what I'm going to be facing here shortly, you know? Well, I don't know if they have any private autism schools. I mean, oh. ours are high functioning. <laughs> I think if he's nonverbal, I wonder yeah. if he might need to check into another parent. But they went; they were in Overland Park, so right. I don't know. You know, if good luck. Yeah. Well, I hope things work yeah. out for you guys, man. Just know you got support. Like I said, from us. I'll help yeah. as much as I can. You know, I have no problem like giving you a voice and helping you spread the message. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because these little guys, I, I mean, little guys, little girls, these little tiny humans, but, I mean, I might be biased, but my children are perfect. <laughs> they just, they're, yeah. they're sweet, loving, nurturing little humans. I mean, well, they got there's a certain innocence, <laughs> what I've learned, there's a certain innocence to they autistic are. children. They you are, know? and well, they're both taken care a lot of, of things, right? when they do something wrong, they just don't, they, they don't understand. Right. They, did it wrong. they don't understand and they didn't do it malicious or viciously there are times that they do because they're siblings <laughs> but 99 percent of the time is like what and they truly like you tell them like hey let's do it this way and they totally freak out now yeah. like all of a sudden it's like seriously like a ptsd like a trauma traumatic thing yeah. they go from zero to flip out because of nothing they're like, what are you going to do to me? What are you going to do to me? What do you mean, what am I going to do to you? My son will do something, and he'll start crying and freaking out, and he'll be like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because, yeah. you know, he's not verbal, but he can say, like, drink. He can say hungry, you know. But he can't. And, and, the, and as soon as he sees me walking, he thinks I'm going to punish him. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay. And he'll go into a full meltdown because he thinks I'm going to punish him. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, these, these, these kids that just, they – all they want is to love and be loved. Yeah. And they have just so many different, oh, there's a great resource that just joined right now. <laughs> a great resource. Um, so, I mean, these kids are being punished and they don't even understand. And we're supposed to teach them right from wrong. And they think they're doing right, but they're being told they're doing wrong. And it's, right. it's, it's just totally just. That's what I was saying earlier about confusing them is that like, you're trying to teach them right. one way and then they're going to school and then they're being taught something else. Right. So now right. they're like, okay, well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Right. And, and they're already got, confused about the situation. And they've already got miscons. I don't even, the word just fell out of my mouth. Misconstrued. Uh, is that what you're trying yeah, to say? Misconstrued on perception. Mm. Perception's a big thing. So you yeah. could be laughing in a room with an autistic kid, and they're like, yeah. "Why are you laughing at why me? Why are you laughing at me? Right? You're laughing at a joke that they right? Have, yeah, or at a funny moment or whatever, That's a and they think it big you're struggle making fun of them. Yeah, right. It's a huge thing with and he, autism. He loves telling yeah. jokes. We got him this joke book, and he said it. We just <laughs> busted out laughing and laughing and laughing. And I mean, he straight up, he lost it. He started crying. He went, he curled up in a ball and he was just like doing the rocking. Like you said, you know, he just needed his alone time. And 
I gave him a few minutes and I went and I talked to him and he goes, I said that joke and you guys just started laughing at me. It was horrible. And you guys thought it was stupid. And we're like, no, it was really funny. And <laughs> so we're, we're working on it and everything right. like that. And it's, you know, if you're going to tell a joke, you want people to laugh. You know, you want that. And so now he's starting to kind of get that and everything else. But it's something that that's simple that adults or, you know, we understand they don't. They just they don't. They think that the whole world is looking at them in a negative manner and look yeah. what the school's doing. And it's not just their perception. I have many messages, many phone calls to prove that they really, really are doing it that way. And the school's reinforcing that because they're telling them every day that they're doing something wrong. Exactly. Right. Yep. So. I, I think the biggest thing for me is, like I said, they're putting them in general population with kids that aren't autistic. And they've got teachers who don't care about autistic children or understand autistic children who are just dismissing them. And the, that that's the problem. That's the core of all these problems right here. Right. And. A lot of things, this, I wasn't familiar with autism until my kids were diagnosed with it. I knew that yeah, I wasn't either. was going on. And when we were going through the testing and everything else, and the doctor had me in the room and he said, okay, Gabriel is autistic. And I said, no, he's not. I said, there's no way he's autistic. Have you heard him talk? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, autistic kids, are they can't talk. And they said, no, there's, it's a whole specter. And they broke it down and they tried to talk to me. And I was like, are you kidding? So me as a mom with an autistic child, I am still learning what right. that means and what goes with it. I had the generalized perception of an autistic child is a non nonverbal. Well, all the and autistic kids that I've encountered through my life have been nonverbal. So that's what I always thought too. Exactly. Yes. And it's, it's not true. And uh -huh. a friend of ours, their child, he is nonverbal and they're still working with him. Another friend of ours, their son has to go through specialized food therapy because, and this is one thing that triggered us to get investigated is Gabriel is very sensitive to textures, you know, certain, certain things he just will not eat, you know, and there's different right. therapies and different things. So two high functioning autistic children are not going to have the same triggers, the same traits, the same anything. And every one of them is different. And it's, I'm still learning. I am still learning. I yeah. have no idea. So what about all these other parents who may or may not have an autistic child when they hear about how this child's acting, are they going to understand, Hey, it's just something, it's, it's a disability. It's something that they have that they cannot help, you know? Right. And, I mean, I know that there's autism awareness, but it's it's a real thing. It's a big thing. And like I said, mom of two autistic children, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning right. my own little children and different things that go with it, let alone an entire school of staff being educated about it as well. So. Right. Then maybe that's maybe that's the the problem is that the the education about autism just isn't there. There needs to be more education about it. You know, people need to be educated better. Yeah. Because it seems like the, it it just so it's a problem that they just look at like we just don't want to deal with it. So they don't even try to bring any light to it or educate anybody road. about it. Yeah. So because I didn't know anything about it either until my son uh, was born. Yeah, I've never, never I, really dealt with autistic kids. You know, autism wasn't a thing. It might have been around when I was younger, and you know, but like it wasn't a thing. Like they wasn't diagnosing. You know, if anything, they'd say, "Well, we just don't understand what's wrong with them. We don't know." Well, I yeah. mean, it goes hand in hand with mental health. Is yeah, there's, there's so much, and I mean, that's what they're doing. Is you've got this kid that already has perception issues. You know, the way that you you are looking at me, or you're, you know you're laughing at each other or something and you're looking at me bad. Well, what's that doing to their, their mental health? They're thinking right. bad upon themselves. And then when you're constantly telling them you did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. I mean, my kid's mental health, like there's some days that I try to suck it up and put my mommy panties on and it's hard. It is hard because I am trying to be their emotional outlet and it's everything I can not to claw 
somebody to pieces and to keep my emotions in check where I can support my child and not just sit there, break down and curl up in a ball and just cry because they're hurting so bad on the inside. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot that these little humans are going through and kudos to Jessica for starting this with Wyatt because I mean, I tried and I was made like, I truly felt like my kids were the only ones, like they're the problem child. They're the horrible kids, you know, and everything like that. And it's just denied in every avenue that I knew where to go. She knew how to do it. She got lined up with this, the right resources and a friend of mine connected the two of us. And it's just, I get it girl, <laughs> bring us with you. We're ready to fight with you. And yeah, definitely. I hope that there's more because these little, little babies, they're so innocent and they don't deserve any of this. They no. don't, and they can't keep getting treated like this. It's, it's uncalled for. It's disgusting. Well, they're not, they're not like able to handle that. They're not mentally <laughs> equipped for that type of, you know, for people to be talk talking to them and, and, and putting them down like that. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're very emotional and they're confused and they're, they're sensitive to the way people talk to them. I mean, here's the thing, like, like Jessica said last night, like we've stated today is the staff changes. So if that's adult staff, mm -hmm. why such a high turnover whenever Grace Moore had the same staff for so many years? Are they seeing the way the kids are being treated? Are they as humans, adults being treated this way by their boss as well? I mean, why, why such a big turnover with the staff too? I mean, there that makes me want to like try to reach not, out and contact some of these former teachers, you know, because I bet you there's a lot more stories out there that haven't been told we yet. We lost a really good one last year. Let me tell you, yep. I, there's some the of them. Advocate. Yeah. Let me tell you, she had a backbone and she fought. She, she was a good one. Did and they fire her? She transferred. Okay. Cause I was thinking somebody like that, that's going to go against the system. They're going to fight. They're going to get rid of them. Yep. So they don't I like when you stand up for yourself and you stand up and you speak out. I think she got a lot of pushback and yeah, was, I think she stood her ground and I think she stood up for herself. And I think she, she probably tried to, I know she tried to stand up for Gabriel. She did. She did. That's awesome. So, I mean, I, I will, contact some of the previous teachers that we've had but uh -huh. um i don't know when that'll happen that will wait until we get further advanced in yeah what side um but i mean one point i have to respect that this could be their livelihood and to jeopardize that that is asking a lot i mean and that would be a huge choice is do i jeopardize my career or do I stand up for the child? I mean, so, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot of give and take and respect, you know, on both points to, you know, a, touch base with them at a later time as you know, right. Hey, will you advocate for my child again. And if they say I'm going to lose my job, then I would assume that'd probably be their position because who needs to lose their job and not deal with children. Let's, yeah. let's face the facts. Right. So, yeah. But. Wow. That's, this is crazy. <laughs> it's deep, ain't it? It really is. It really is because I've been talking to these teachers and they make it sound so good. Oh, bring them in here. We've got special programs and this and that. And, you know, and I, so I always was thinking that they have a special place for autistic kids. They got people who are trained to deal with them, you know, and now I'm hearing that they're in, you know, okay, public here. School around other kids that aren't autistic and they're dealing with teachers that don't know how to deal with them and all the stuff that I, that they're telling you isn't true here like that's the way, would be way my it's suggestion seen. for you is I would make you know like a list of questions honestly yeah and, you know how would you specifically deal with my child situation if you would choke if you didn't chop his food good enough you know or or this, yeah. or what would you do if you noticed something and you were changing your say Like, I would seriously make some good questions. But whenever you go to the school, if they say, yeah, we have a special autism room, show me. Right. 
See if they show you. Hey, I Because I was under the impression that he was going to be in a class with other autistic and, kids. And that could be. That could, that be. could be. But yeah. ours are... Ours are verbal, so yeah. it could be different. But I would ask them, show me. Oh, we have a special teacher. Okay, I want to meet her. Right. What would you do in this situation? You know, don't don't trust nobody. I am telling you. We I have a uh, system. You know, they're good. They'll follow it. They know the laws. They know the whoa. No, 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 no. We have a uh, meeting with the coordinator tomorrow. So. But yeah. Yeah. I would ask them and I would say, show me. Oh, well, we can't do it today. Okay, tomorrow. I mean, keep pushing. Because if, I mean. Absolutely. That's what, that's what got us in this position. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't take my advice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, the concerns are definitely there, though, because you guys aren't the only ones that, are, you know. It's not like a isolated incident. There's a lot of people coming forward saying we've had that problem too. So more people. Oh yeah, Jessica said people's been messaging her. People's been messaging me. Like yeah, ever since that live came out last night, we've had quite a few people come forward I and wonder, say I dealt with that too. The school did this to me. I wonder if it's the same school or different schools. I know that. To a point it matters, to a point it doesn't, is I'm sure it's going on in every school. Right. But how many can we get for this school? How many for that school can get rallied together? I mean, let's just, let's call it like it is. Let's call the kettle black. I mean, whatever. I don't care. Right. And you know what? Get with your child. I've been trying, Nick and I have been trying for years, years to figure this out, crack the code. We've just constantly fought. We went to the superintendent. We've called the state of Missouri. You know, we wrote it. We, <laughs> we just got nowhere. And then Jessica last night, you know, she did it. And it's like, hey, somebody told me about that. Put me in connection with her. And it's like, hey, this is what we've been looking for. This is what we've needed. She has the resources. She knows, you know, whatever. This is all working out. This is the time it was supposed to happen. And so, hey, so let's all rally together. Let's all get together. If it's Grace Moore, let's figure it out. Let's plan it out. If it's another school, let's figure out who needs to go after that school because no kid in any school, any situation, anything needs to go through any of this. Right. No kid. Absolutely. So far, all the, all the complaints I've heard have been about Grace Moore specifically, but I'm sure that it goes on in other schools. I mean, I don't know how it couldn't. Yeah. 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 So. Well. So, like, what's, what's the what's the plan? We just keep fighting it, right? Like, where do we go from here? You know, we just keep standing up and keep speaking out. Well, it wasn't even twenty four hours from Jessica's video, and we already had another suspension at Grace Moore. So, yeah. what shall the next twenty four hours bring? <laughs> and anybody who's listening, any concerns? I mean, hit me up. I have no problem. Letting you know people on here, and this is the whole point of what I do. I mean, is the, to give a voice to people who don't have a voice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Jessica started it, and then look what happened. Not even 24 hours later, there was another one that boy. Yeah. He Her video insane. did 3,000 views. Really? I don't know if you paid attention to that. If you look at it, it was 2.7k last time I looked at it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good it's job, on Jeff. my page. You look at it; it'll show you. Like, I so, I mean, people are watching. People are yeah. watching. Yeah. Good. They need to. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it can't be swept under the rug anymore. And she is well aware. I use this word all the time. I probably need to. No, that's just a unneeded jab. But the word accountability. I mean, I wish somebody could truly look it up and see what it means and practice it and live it, especially when you're in a spot of authority. Right. Is you need to be accountable. Do what you say, say what you do. Now, she is very, very spot on. She says she's going to suspend your kid and do the worst punishment ever. Yes, she she is very, very on top of that. Every she's time. all about the punishment, but you she's not about the solution. 100%. Right. Yes. right. If she but put that now, effort into working this out and finding a solution for the problem, she wouldn't have to keep punishing these kids. Correct. 
Right. Correct. It and sounds like I, you need a new principal. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> that would yeah. be very welcomed. That yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be the start of the cleanup. That would be definitely the start. Right. Yes. Absol absolutely the start because we all know everything goes downhill. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, now her boss will tell you and she will defend her and she will say that I support my principal and anything she says goes, she can make up the rules, whatever she decides. Because I went to him about the cell phone and she said, there must be a reason why your son's cell phone was taken away. And I said, I would like to know that reason because I was only told that no student was to have a cell phone, but mine was the only one that was physically removed from his hand. Right. right. And I, I, I can't get an answer except for I support my principal's decision. It's because your kid is not like all the other children. Yep. Let, let, that, that's what it is. Yep. And yep. that's why they're picking on him. That's why they're taking his phone. That's why they believe that he shouldn't have the same privileges as the other children. Now, because now, he's different. Just get him out of here. Now, we will see tomorrow. And yeah. we will have another problem because then my children will have been touched inappropriately. Is if they are checked for air tags tomorrow. That will be a test to see who and how many have seen this video because I know quite a few of them have. And if they touch my children and even try to look for their air tag, it's it probably going to ha happen. You should probably prepare yourself for that. Probably yeah. going to happen. As messed up as, as it is. Yep. Because we have gotten to the point where we put air tags on them because it seems like they make they their own them. rules. They make they their own rules. Yeah. So, I think that's smart, though, that you do that. Yeah. I would have never even thought about that. I mean, if they if they, they want to, and I can ping them. So, I mean, you know, yeah. they're, they're my kids. They're my responsibility. I've tried trusting you with them, and you've broken that trust. I think so, in, I don't trust you anymore. Instead of, like, disciplining them and, like, outcasting them, they should, like, have a special place for these autistic children you know like if, if if i got a class of 50 kids and i got one autistic child instead of outcasting him i would be taking him under my wing giving him you know giving him extra attention making sure he's okay singling him out for a positive reason to help him you know instead of just outcasting him those are the those, those are the kids that need to need that extra attention those are the ones Started. ones you're supposed to care about let me let me put it like that absolutely so. we started um uh, oh the places you'll go dr seuss the book yeah when gabriel was in, in preschool we sent it i would take it to the school to the teacher have them write mm -hmm. in it man one of his preschool teachers she's retired by now but she oh she was god's gift to this earth her name was miss ann let me tell you that school favoritism did not have anything on her and Gabriel's relationship. <laughs> she, uh, they were buds. They had the same birth date. She, her, she took a page and a half in this book to just write nothing but praises about him That's and awesome. everything. He is so compassionate. He's so charismatic. He will get the paper towels for the, the shorter kids, which is all the kids in the school, you know, just all these different, you know, quirky little remarks and everything. And it's just, it's so great to look back and read right. this. He doesn't know anything about it. And but see that then, account from her is how he really is. Uh, yeah. What you're then, hearing now is just people picking on him and singling him out. <laughs> that was her getting to know him and telling you, how he really was. Oh, it was these it, other teachers aren't beautiful. getting to know him. They're not taking the time to understand him. Like you said, a teacher that takes him under their wing, and that's exactly what she did. Ask, yeah, absolutely. And let him be himself and express. That's awesome. Him, for him mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and his teacher last year said, "Good luck shine. in your future endeavors." Period. Yeah. Like you had him an entire school year. That's the best you could get. Right. So, I mean, it's just, you know, but the principal also back to school night, the primary teacher that Gabriel got this year, she met me at the front door and she said, Oh, Lanning family. I've heard so much about you. And I said, from who? <laughs> she said, Oh, Mrs. Harris has filled me in. So there, 
<laughs> wow, did he even have a chance? Yeah, right. Yeah. Which, again, it goes back to the confidentiality we were talking about earlier. She is not supposed to be spreading your business amongst anybody. Yeah, Every yeah. conversation you have is supposed to be confidential. Your child, his autism, his health, everything going on with that child is supposed to be confidential. He's a minor. Like, yeah. you're not supposed to be telling people his business. Yep. Or asking me to drop his pill bottle off in the office. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well. All right. Well, I hope that things get better for you guys. Like I said, I'm here. You know, reach out. I'll bring you on. I have no problem doing this because this is bothering me a lot. Yeah. And, and, and so I want to help fight in this case as much as I can. Well, you know, these kids need, need people to fight for them. Well, thank you. Hopefully, no problem, man. That, you know, if there's more families, let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. And yeah. Let's have a big group night. <laughs> let's have a party. What did Jessica say? Absolutely. So, so. All right. Well, thank you so much. No yeah. problem. Thank keep you. me updated, though. Like, you know, contact me. Talk to me. I'll help you out as much as I can. I mean, I, I you know, I well, can. Like I can at least broadcast it for you. I don't have a lot of power, but I can put it out there and push it. Yeah. So. Well, All right. that's two autistic kids suspended within two days, and Tenley's going to school tomorrow, so we'll see how her day goes. That's crazy. Yeah. Three for three? <laughs> At this point, I don't even know. <laughs> well, if it happens, we'll be on here talking again. Oh, yes, we will. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You guys have a good night. All right. You, you as well. Too. Thank God you. God bless you all. All right. Thank bye -bye. you. All right. Bye-bye.